Hey students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we are going to learn the second lesson for multiplying functions. The first two examples are kind of like review from the previous lesson, so let's have a look. In the previous lesson, we have learned two different methods. One is a box method, the other is a string method. As for plugging in, we can either plug into the function separately, then multiply, or find what the function is going to be after you multiply them, then plug in the final answer. So for the two examples, I'm actually going to do one of each. So for the first one, let's, uh, let's use the string method. method f uh, times g of x is the same as the first function, 2x squared minus x minus a, multiplied with the second function, 3x minus 2. So we have the first term that needs to go into the, that needs to multiply with the second function, the second parenthesis. So that needs to go together with 3x and the negative 2, which is going to be 6x cubed minus 4x squared. And then the second term, which is negative 8x, it needs to multiply with 3x and negative 2 as well. So negative x times 3x is a negative 3x squared. Negative x times negative 2 is a plus 2x. Lastly, the negative 8 need to multiply with a 3x and a negative 2. So it's a negative 24x and a positive 16. Now it's time to simplify or combine like terms. 6x cubed, we have right there, minus 7x squared, and then plus 2x, and negative 24x is a minus 22x, eventually a plus 16. But as you can see, when you have a three term multiply with a two terms, drawing the strings, well, since you only have the top and the bottom, it could get more confusing. So maybe for this, the box method will be visually clearer. But now let's plug in f times g of negative 2. For this one, I'm pl going to plug into the final answer. 6 times negative 2 squared, I mean cubed, minus 7 times negative 2 squared, minus 22x, plus uh, 22 times negative 2, and then plus 16. There you go. So the first one is going to be a negative 8 times 6 is a negative 48. And then this is a 4 times 7, so it's a minus 28. Here's a negative 2 times a negative 22 is a plus 44, eventually is a plus 16. So these are 60. The first two is going to be negative 76. So negative 16. That's example one. Example two. This time I'm going to use the box method. So the first function has two terms. The second function also has two terms. So I'm going to need to draw a two by two box. Let's uh, put the first function on the top, x cubed plus 5x squared. And then the second function on the side, 2x cubed and plus 4. Let's multiply them. 2x cubed times x cubed is going to be a 2x to the 6th power. 2x cubed times 5x squared is going to be a 10x to the 5th power. Negative 4 times x cubed is negative 4x cubed. And then negative 4 times 5x squared is a negative 20x squared. f times g of x. Well, there's nothing you can combine because you have a 6th power, 5th power, 3rd power, and a 2nd power. So we're just going to put them in order into standard form. 2x to the 6th power plus 10x to the 5th power minus 4x cubed minus 20x squared. Oh, I actually copied it wrong. It's actually a plus. So these are all going to be positive. There you go. Okay. And for this one, plugging in, I'm actually going to do it separately. So f times g of negative 4 is the same as f of negative 4 times g of negative 4. So f of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 to the third power plus 5 times negative 4 squared. So that's a negative 64 in the front. And then we have a positive 80 right there, which is going to become a positive 16. Okay, next we have g of negative uh, 4. Let me use a different color, g of negative 4. That's going to be 2 times negative 4 to the third power and plus 4. So the first part is a negative 64 times 2, which is a negative 128, plus 4 is a negative 124. And now eventually, to calculate what we have, we're going to need to multiply the 16 and the negative 124 together, which is going to be negative 1,984. There you go. 
So these two examples are things that we have learned in the previous lesson. Now let's move on to the next few examples where we're going to multiply exponential functions. In example three, first function is 3 to the x power. Second function is 2 times 4 to the x power. So g times h of x is going to be 3 to the x power times 2 times 4 to the x power. What makes the exponential co function complicated or multiplying the exponential function complicated is uh, you have a bunch of parentheses that might be quite confusing. But something to be clear, the 3x to the, to the x power and the 4x to the power, x power, they're just like your uh, x squared and x cubed. There's nothing you can do or change with them. So they have to kind of stay how they are. So let's see. Now we can actually open the parentheses. It's a bunch of multiplication. So it's 3 to the x power times 2 times 4 to the x power. I'm actually going to take an extra step here for us to kind of understand what it means. So 3 to the x power, whenever we have exponent, that means a bunch of 3 multiply together. And altogether, since the exponent is an x, there's x amount of 3s. And the 4 to the x power is 4 times 4 times 4, and you have x amount of 4. So in other words, and they're still being multiplied together. So in other words, all together, you have x amount of 3 times x amount of 4. And if you pair them up, you actually have x amount of 12. But the 2 in the front, well, the 2 doesn't have an exponent. So the 2 is like your um, 5x squared. The 5 won't actually go into the exponent. So that number just stayed in the front. So it's 2 times 12 to the x power. There you go. That's, the, that's how we actually multiply it. Uh, exponential functions. If they have an exponent and they both are x, they are the same, we're going to multiply the base. So 3 times 4, that gives us the 12. If a number doesn't have an exponent, that's the coefficient, we're going to keep it in the front. Okay, now we need to calculate the plugging in. g times h of negative 1 is going to be 2 times 12 to the negative 1 power. So it's 2 times 1 12, which is 1 6. So technically, it's 2 over 12. Let me write an extra step. 2 times 1 12, which is 2 over 12, simplifies to be 1 over 6. There you go. Example 4. Similar concept, similar idea. g times h of a is 3 times 2 to the a power, and then multiply with 5 to the a power. So I open all the parentheses. That's 3 times 2 to the a power times 5 to the a power. Because it's all multiplication right here, and they're both to the a power. So there, these are the two things that have the exponent. So we're going to multiply the base, which is going to become 10 to the a power. The 3 doesn't have an exponent. It's like a coefficient. So the 3 just stay in the front. And for this one, the plugging in process, I'm actually going to do it separately. So g times h of 2 is the same as g of 2 times h of 2. g of 2 is going to be 3 times 2 squared, which is 12. h of 2 is going to be 5 squared, which is 25. So g times h of 2 is going to be 12 times 25, which is going to be 300. There you go. If you actually choose to plug in here, that would be 10 squared, which is 100 times 3, which is also 300. Either way works. That's example 4. Moving on, example 5. g times h of x. So the first thing, 4 times 5 to the x power times 8 times 5 to the x power. Something you have to be clear about the exponential function is it's all going to be multiplication in between. So in that case, there is no addition, so we are not distributing anything. For exponential function, there is no distribution in this case. Like We can only distribute when there's a plus. But in these situations, there's no plus. There's no extra number being added or uh, added on. So it's all multiplication. Then when we open the parentheses, it's just 4 times 5 to the x power times 8 times another 5 to the x power. The two part that has the exponent, that's a 2 the x power, that's a 2 the x power. So combined, it's going to be 25 to the x power. Then the number in the front, the 4 and the 8, are also being multiplied. So it's 32 times 25 to the x power. 
Okay, g times h to the negative 2 power is going to be 32 times 25 to the negative 2 power. That's basically 32 times, that's 25 squared on the bottom of the fraction, so it's 1 over 625. So it's going to be 32 over 625. There's nothing to simplify. That's example 5. Lastly, example 6. This is where things get even more complicated, because not only do we have all the multiplication from the exponential function, this time we do actually have addition. So, g times h of a is going to be 5 times 2 to the a power times 2 times 3 to the a power plus 2. That's where things get a little bit more complicated. You have to understand whenever we write a, an exponential function is a times b to the x power. So these two are almost like they're together. a is like the coefficient, and then b to the x power is your main function over there. So this actually is one term. So first is going to be that term multiplied with right there. So that is going to be a 2 to the a power has an exponent. The 3 to the a power has an exponent. That becomes 6 to the a power. The number in the front is a 5, and the 2, they're going to be multiplied, which becomes a 10. So that part is 10 times 6 to the a power. Next, we need to distribute this term again to just the 2. So when you multiply the 5 times 2 to the a power times the 2, the only part that has an exponent is the 2 to the a power. So that part stays. And then the 5 and the 2 are just two numbers without exponents. They're going to be multiplied together, which becomes a 10. And in between them, well, it's a plus 2, so it's a plus. There you go. And eventually, when you are there, the first part has 6 to the a power. The second part has 2 to the a power. So that's almost like when you have a 10x to the 6 power, and then you have another 10x squared. Well, even though they're both x, they're not like terms because they don't have the same exponent. So you can't combine them. You're just going to keep them exactly like that. Same thing with here. You can't actually combine them. So we're going to keep it that way. Now it's time to plug numbers in. g times a of negative 3. That's 10 times 6 to the negative 3 power plus 10 times 2 to the negative 3 power. So we got a 10 times 6 to the negative 3 power is a 1 over 216. And then 2 to the negative 3 power is a 1 over 8. The first part we can actually simplify. 5 over 216 is going to be a, about 10 over 216 is going to be a 5 over 108. And the next part, 10 over 8 is going to be a 5 over 4. We do actually need to combine them. And that is going to become 108 on the bottom. So the top is actually going to become a 5 plus 135. So it's 140. We can actually simplify that. Um, that is going to be, well, 70, so 35 over 27. There you go. That's example 6, and that is everything for this lesson. Thank you.